That makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah. look, hindsight is twenty twenty, so it's easy to look back and say, oh, wow. But when you were working on The Breakfast Club, you were there with your co-stars, John Hughes. Like, could you tell, like, this was going to be a movie that, you know, would define teen angst for generations and years and lifetimes to come? So we, I, pers- I don't think any of us had no, we had no idea that it was going to have this life that it has had. That was a complete surprise. And it's still surprising to me that it just has this ongoing life. Um, no, nobody had any idea at all. Um, it was really wildly wonderful to work on it because we were in one set, the five of us all the time, pretty much living together in a hotel. I love John Hughes. Um, I felt completely trusted by him. We got to mess around and improv and he trusted us. Um, it was just a completely different experience than what I had had earlier. It was, I mean, I think it was only my fourth movie, but something like that, but it was, it was different. And after that, I mean, the the remaining years of the eighties, it was never, I never had an experience like the breakfast club again. Really? Yeah. You would say it was like your most special experience out of all your eighties movies. Well, it was just so unique. It was just, um, a group of actors. We were at like our little company. Um, and it was only about these five actors in this one set with John directing and TV Allen editing. So thank God. Um, and it, it's not like that. I mean, and usually when you're filming, it's a location and there's, you know, a big studio and there's, there's a whole, there's a whole, bunch, there's a whole other framework going on. Right. This was just us creating the movie and the scenes all together. It felt like John was part of the cast. Um, I, I, I just, I haven't, I haven't had, it, it has never been quite like that again. Wow. Well, one thing that stands out to me is the 80s fashions. Yes. <laughs> what was your, do you have a favorite like 80s fashion that you loved back then? And I mean, they were so I unique. Loved I loved what was going on with the, the Allison look. You know, I love I love the goth thing. Um, I love the long sweaters and the high tops and the kind of you know um, you know gender fluid sort of look uh, that was happening around at least what I was doing. Um, but I but also I mean the eighties were very high fashion, right? Everybody's hair suddenly got really big. Totally. Oh, I so I've seen some of these pictures. And you're like, God, everyone's hair was just huge. Lots you know? of neon colors. Yeah. Acid wash everything. Yes. Were you into like music, like quote unquote goth music that, you know, like The Cure and Depeche Mode, like stuff you would think that Allison would listen to? I, yeah, I love The Cure. Um, I was listening to a lot of David Bowie when we were doing the movie. Um, for some reason, it was an Allison thing. Um, I, 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 it was a lot of, uh, for Allison, it was a lot of, it was some of the, the, the grunge stuff coming in a little bit, like the eighties version of that. Um, but it was, um, Allison was a lot of classic rock. I gotta say a lot of, uh, and a lot of stuff from the late seventies, maybe it was the eighties when she was still listening to that. Right. You know? Yeah. Are there any styles from the eighties that you could just do without? Like, would it be the big hair or is there something that sticks out of like, why did we ever do this? I, I think the hair got too big at a certain point. At a certain point, I think there, I think there was too much hair everywhere, you know, just too much. The, the, and the rock music and the act, every, everywhere you went, somebody had this enormous, <laughs> there was too much hairspray in the eighties. How about that? That's, that's a very valid point. <laughs> what about how was working with John Hughes? I mean, you know, you hear so much about John Hughes. Like, what what was it really like to work with him? He was lovely. Um, I only had the one experience um, with him as a director. I worked with him again where he was a producer um, years later. But as a director, I loved him. I felt like he, I, I felt trusted by him. That's a huge thing because a lot of the time, working on a film, there's, there's not always a feeling of being trusted by the director. Um, right. In that case, 
absolutely. He didn't want to change anything about me at all. He let me um, figure out with him the way that Allison would look. And there are all sorts of little improv things in there that I just felt free to make things up. Um, her physicality or this or that or the other thing, it, I felt safe, um, hard to describe, but I think, I think everyone did. Um, and John would, um, you know, the cameras would, everything was different back then, but um, he would sit right on a little box right underneath the camera. So it was, it was almost like he was in the scene with us, do you know? And he, and he would laugh and he would love it. And it, he, it felt like he, we were this circle and he was in there even though he wasn't on camera. He wasn't in another room watching something on a monitor or doing something like that. Do you know what I mean? He was always right in there. And some of the, the improvs in that movie just came from his particular sense of humor and the freedom that he gave all of us. That's so interesting that you were able to like kind of craft the look and like the backstory and a lot of that. Yes, yes, and the um, the costume designer um, Marilyn Vance was also super open and creative and fun. Um, he somehow or other, I, Ned Tannen was producer on it. Somehow they 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 put together this group of people that were just um, not controlling, that were open and creative, and I think that's part of what you get in the movie, you can feel that. I didn't feel like somebody was trying to control anything. You know, wow. there was liberation in it. That's awesome. I know you said mm -hmm. recently, like the one thing like you did disagree with John on and like that was the most uncomfortable part for you was like at the end when like Allison like put the bow in her hair and put on makeup. Walk me through that. Um, so that was in the script. Um, she gets transformed into this sort of like princess thing happening. Um, I, I, I would have, I, I don't feel like that was a necessary thing in the script, but it was part of the, um, it was part of the, the eighties, you know, uh, sort of rom-com kind of thing that was going on. Um, I think what I, he actually, he agreed with me. Um, so this was more of a, a thing where the, this was something that the studio wanted and he had written it, um, but he let me, I, I had all this black eyeliner on and things for Allison that were part of what she would look like was armor, right? And he did let me change it so that instant, Molly is actually taking some of that um, heavy duty, uh, you know, <laughs> scary makeup off of Allison. So I was trying to think of it as more of like an uncovering. Do you know what I mean? She takes off that enormous black sweater and suddenly, you know, there's the actual person in there. Um, something about being able to come out of the, the hiding really that she had. There, so to get an element of that in, and he, and he really did go there with me. It was much more of a makeover thing when it was originally written. So um, it, it, it did evolve. That makes sense. And that really was where Allison kind of ended up that we saw. I mean, she kind of stripped away the armor of her. 